Synthaholics. Synthaholics, thank you so much for downloading this episode. Today we are talking about the last and final episode of Lower Decks for Season 1. You have myself, Aaron O'Brien, and David Duncan. Hello, Dave. Hutzpah. 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 Dave. Hutzpah. We got some um, news um, that uh, Kate Mulgrew is going to be coming back as Captain Janeway. How many Tuvixes will she kill this time in so front of the Tuvix. children? Because <laughs> it's supposed to be a children. Ch- like it's a, it's a children's Star Trek show, like right. on Nickelodeon. Is a an anime series called Star Trek Prodigy. It's going to be on Nickelodeon. So this is where I remember I talked about this before that I was confused that. Um, this I thought this anime series was supposed to be on supposed to be on um, Nickelodeon and it's supposed to be for kids and this is what they were talking about so um, yeah so Janeway I, is coming back and there's going to be like um, this like, is how we murder gonna... Tuvix children yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is how you have salamander babies um, first you no, have to go it's... really really fast and once you've gone so fast you can't go your any faster your tongue falls out and don't worry, it's completely natural. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so this is this has been kind of talked about for a while, but we never knew that uh, Kate Mulgrew was coming back as Janeway. So it's going to be a car, it's going to be animated, it's going to be CG apparently, and um, I don't know if this is for little children or for teens, or I'm not really sure. Tweens. Um, <laughs> yeah, maybe even tweens. I'm not really sure, but somewhere in between there, we don't know. But um, but she's going to be like, there's going to be a bunch of kids, and they're going to get uh, somehow their hands on an older ship or a, like a like a derelict ship, and they're going to take over that, and then do like adventures. So um, I just I just can't see Janeway being like a babysitter for all these like kids. Oh my god, you're so annoying. Um, one of the um, so the people developing it is this uh, Kevin and Dan uh, Hagman, and they've done Troll Hunters and, and Ninjago. So I watched Ninjago with the kids some years ago. I didn't really like it, but it's it was well done. It just wasn't like very entertaining for an adult to watch. Yeah. Troll Hunters, on the other hand, it was much more interesting. And I think Troll Hunters was done by. Um, uh, the same guy who did like Pan's Labyrinth and in the Hellboy movies, uh, oh, uh, Del Toro, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, Guillermo Del Toro, Kimir, yeah, right. So, um, interesting, interesting. He, he didn't do it; he was like a producer of it. But, um, but it was it was an interesting cartoon series, and I watched that with the kids. And it was I didn't watch all of them, but I, I, I caught them when they were on, and it was like oh, that's you know, entertaining, you know, I can watch it and not want to kill myself. So these guys are, they're, they're adept at what they're doing. They know what they're doing. So I can say that probably we're going to have a, at least a decent, uh, animation of, uh, of the Star Trek prodigy, whether these like, you know, wayward teens, taking a derelict Starfleet ship and and looking for adventure with Janeway. I don't know how that all works out. Sounds a little bit like Picard, but um, yeah, it just seems really, really weird that it's it's Janeway. I mean, I mean, I guess she, she was, I guess, slightly more tolerant of children than you know, Picard was. 
but at the same time, like I, I actually just kind of this is kind of coming to me, you know, like how in in Picard, he's like, I don't have any experience with children, like dealing with a like a teenager like as Dodge. He lived an entire life as <laughs> and raised a daughter and a son and had a grandson. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Whenever yeah, you he think, got the flute, I think you got yeah you get used to that uh, in inner light. Um, it reminds me of the old. I don't know if you remember this an old uh, animation series that they just redid it recently, but um, called the Magic School Bus. Oh yeah, I've heard of it. Oh no, remember Jane that? It's the like, Magic School Bus Lady. Yeah, it's kind of what it remind me of. Is she Honestly, also going to be the lunch lady? She's going to just put the slop on their on their trays. You can't eat your meat if you don't. You can't have your pudding if you don't eat your meat. And and your vegetables. You gotta eat the vegetables. Um, I don't know. I I mean, I'm nope. willing to be just you know, let it let it happen and see if it's good, if it's bad, you know. Um, but it yeah, it, it definitely has a little bit of the the magic school bus kind of thing to it in my head. So no dessert until you've broken the prime directive sixteen times. <laughs> that's why she's doing it with a bunch of kids because she can't do it in Starfleet and <laughs> pretty much um let's see yeah so anyways interesting stuff um I, did they give a release date for this yet I don't know if they did anything for that I, I know that uh, she, she's uh, she started doing some of her recordings but I don't think there's an actual release date for um, Star Trek Prodigy yet. Yeah, so. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to watch the... Star Trek Prodigy. I don't have television. <laughs> I, I don't just, have a television in my house. I just stream stuff. I mean, I don't, I don't have cable TV. I don't have. I don't get Nickelodeon. You know what I mean? I wonder if they'll. I wonder if they'll do like Nickelodeon and CBS All Access. You know, like both of them. I mean, I, I hope so because otherwise, I'm not sure how I'm gonna see this show. Right. Because I'm not getting a television subscription to watch Star Trek. Like I'm not, I'm not signing back up for cable. You know what I mean? No, I, I, I get you. Yeah, it makes sense. So, yeah. Uh, anyway, so interesting news there. Um, but Dave, we are at the very tail ends of Lower Deck for season one. Man, what what an episode this was. This is like, I've got so many questions going forward, but it's like, uh, it was so good. Uh, yeah. I, I, I was kind of blown away by it. And and one of my predictions was, like, on point, except it wasn't played for yucks. You know, how was it? I was expecting the, um... You Packleds know, to show up? Packleds to show up, because it would be good for yucks. And, like, they actually made the Packleds, like, actually kind of menacing in this episode, which was kind of great. Yeah, it was pretty weird. So, uh, so this is the episode No Small Parts, and this is episode 10 of uh season one of lower decks and it first premiered october 8th uh 2020 and um we get to the planet of uh beta Beta three three. where where landrew is from the original series um and landrew worship is back baby Yes, I, we never talked about Landrew other than our Prime, um, directive, series. Prime directive series. Yeah, so we talked a little bit about that, but yeah. So <laughs> Landrew uh, was a supercomputer that these like you know human like aliens end up worshiping, and they have like a kind of a purge moment at some point uh, during the day, and they all go crazy. Festival, and Kirk festival. Kind of, yeah, and Kirk kind of talked the computer into like uh, short circuiting itself. So as Kirk always did back in those days. So. Uh, they make it uh, uh, the Captain Freeman. She's like, "Don't make me talk you into uh, self destruct." <laughs> apparently, right, exactly. That's, apparently, that's just standard uh, Captain. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, it's probably a one on one class at Starfleet Academy. I know. It's probably they, if you're if you're going to be in command, you have to learn how to talk a, a, com, a computer into uh, uh, some kind of um, uh, self feeding feedback loop or something like that, a logic loop. So, <laughs> um, so uh, so yeah. So they 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 kind of like they're they're taking care of this. The, that basically they're looking back to worship against uh, Landrew again and start this whole you know purge thing all over again where they um 
you know, Captain Freeman and uh, Commander Ransom basically like, all right, enough of this shit, and uh, don't make us destroy your computer here. So, and they go back up to the ship, and when they're ready to leave, they find out that they uh, not everyone is beamed back, and who's down on the planet is Mariner and Boimler, and uh, Mariner's like giving out art supplies to kids, uh, and says instead of worshiping this uh this this computer landrew just start let let's start drawing and doing your own thing so and boimler decides to start helping her and she's like why are you helping me this is you know we're not supposed to be doing this and boimler's like uh i know that your you know your mom is a captain and uh i'm gonna get in you know the little rule breaking while i can Oh yeah, because he's like I, I'm protected since you're, you know, and his his comm badge is on the entire time, and he keeps telling and everyone, everyone hears it. Like, everyone on the bridge hears this mm-hmm. because it's been a secret the entire time. Yes. For everyone. So, and, and uh, Mariner is not too happy about him bringing this up, and and Boimler even starts making fun of her and like you know like making like kissy faces and stuff like that. Is oh, your mommy gonna make you? A that kind of stuff. Does, does your mom give you special captain kisses? <laughs> yeah. And they get beamed up Under at that bridge. moment. And uh, so now they're in uh, a little bit of more trouble because of what happened there. So <laughs> the boiler is not too, ha- probably not too happy about getting caught doing that. Uh, somewhere far away, we get uh, the U.S. Uh, the same type of. Um, uh, ship is the Cerritos. I think there's a California class. It's called the uh, 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 Solviang, and they're out looking at these stars. When, which is kind of funny too, because uh, it's a new ship, so she's having everyone take off their shoes, so they're all walking around in their socks. Oh yeah, it's, it's, a, yeah, it's brand new, and uh, she the, this plastic port. film still on all the different consoles. <laughs> Yeah, that was pretty funny, actually. Uh, so while they're doing, while they're out there doing their thing, all of a sudden they run into this. The ship just warps into uh, I- into their area, and then um, uh, starts with a, this giant grappling arm and just starts tearing apart the ship. And they try and to warp out, and they blow up, they blow the whole thing up. Which actually, for a cartoon. It was a quite a dramatic little moment there, and just even the the explosion of the the, the warp explosion there, I was like, wow, that's really interesting how they did that. Yeah, so. it was, I mean, like, like I said, like this 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 show, like I mean, the characters are kind of basic looking, but they go all out for the ships and the stars and the. I mean, I guess the I guess what you would traditionally call a special effect, like you know the, sh- the explosions yeah. and whatnot. It's pretty impressive. Right. Absolutely. Uh, and then we get we find that Tendi is that she is going to be an orient, uh, orientation liaison for a new crew member, and uh, at the same time, uh, Rutherford is playing with his cybernetic implant, and he's got an attitude selector, and he he can like punch in different attitudes like angry or sexy or you know whatever. Yeah, and so it, he's going it seems on. weird. You just can't like ask it to do one. He's got to like cycle through one at a time. Well, he pulls off the thing and he starts pressing the button. So then it's kind of weird. So he just starts cycling through. Uh, so um, Tendi gets introduced to who she's supposed to be showing around. This is an exocomp, which we we were talking about um, last week. Uh, yeah, last week we were talking about the exocomps and how this was uh, just a weird, you know, like. Um, a weird callback from the next generation. The um, exocomps were being used uh, in these episodes, the quality of life. So, Um, and I don't know, I guess they uh, become a life form. Yeah. And it's just uh, in Starfleet, I guess, but it has no hands. It's very, very strange. They didn't really elaborate on like how and why it's uh, a thing. Right, and uh, the exocomp's name is Peanut Hamper. Because so. she analyzed all the different uh, languages in Starfleet, and that's scientifically the best name, somehow. Very strange. Very strange. Um, then in the ready room, uh, with the captain's ready room, uh, Freeman and Mariner are just, uh, talking about what happened uh, with, obviously, their cover being blown, that they're mother and daughter, and uh, so they're... Um, 
basically, you know, she's saying that she's so insubordinate as a as an officer, you know, they could get in, you know, that that she couldn't survive on any other ship. And uh but, you know, then Mariner's like, I could make you know, Wesley C- Crusher worked with his mom, so maybe we could make it work. Maybe it'll work. <laughs> Everyone's like kissing yeah. her ass though as she walks the ship. Yeah, and she's it's something that Mariner definitely does not want. Doesn't want to be known as Freeman's mom or daughter and doesn't want to be like everyone trying to you know, like trying to get uh, get ahead in Starfleet by kissing up to her. So, um, and and so this gets more and more aggravating to her. So, um, uh, this whole thing they get uh, a part where they could get uh, uh, Boimler could get looking for promotion to go to the USS Titan, and they have to give something to Ransom to do that. And then Mariner's like, "Hey, I could get." A- transferred off the ship and then I wouldn't have this problem that everyone trying to kiss my ass to get to the captain. So Boimler and Mariner is kind of like working for the same angle of trying to get promoted onto the USS Titan. And uh, uh, Ransom is just like doing all these weights. <laughs> yeah, I gotta think about this. Boimler, your, your, your uh, resume is you know, impeccable and, and Mariner, you're you know, the captain's daughter, so... You know, what, which one do I pick? Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Peanut Hamper becomes like is an awesome at um, working on uh, patients and in the sick bay can but like, you know, good use, at picking up bottles. Yeah, not good at picking up bottles at all. So that's interesting. Um, and so during this point where they uh, they get a red alert and they find out that um, they have to go uh, go after this, uh, the ship that we saw before getting attacked by the pack lids, the, the solving. And uh, so they, they warp into that and they find the solving completely in pieces. They're kind of um, flying through debris field there. And uh, this is where they got stuck on the tractor beam with the pack lids from before the same ship. And uh, Captain Freeman decides to shut off the engines, the warp engines, because that's exactly how the other ship was destroyed. So uh, from there they go they find out that this is the pack lids that are doing this and they have become like um, not just trying to uh, get people to help them and uh, to in their spacefaring adventures, but also they're now they're just literally taking um, parts from all these different ships. So they have like Romulan ships and Klingon ships and all that stuff. They're just putting them all together. They're just like a hodgepodge ship. It's it's kind of kind of impressive and pretty pretty cool. They're like super powerful with all this different technology. And uh, uh, Captain Freeman uh, turns to her daughter and says, "I need something that's totally unethical. That you uh, an idea to get us into it." So Mariner uh, thinks that there could be a virus that could disable the Packlids uh, ship because they would have to have an open programming system to make all these different parts work together. So Rutherford goes down to one of his training uh, holograms, and this is where he calls up Badgie again. And Badgie says, oh, yeah, I got these um, viruses you can use, but you have have to take off the safety protocols. (laughs) Yeah. He says, wait, if I take off the safety protocols, will you try to kill me again? He goes, no, of course not. So, Um, But Badgie's still acting pretty shifty. So uh, during that whole time, the pack lids are are carving up the Cerritos. Um, they're beaming onto the ship, and they're just attacking everybody. But their uh, beaming Mariner's, is, like, really, really slow. Very slow. It's very funny, actually. Uh, Mariner uh, goes uh, with the rest of the bridge crew, and they, um, uh, while they're setting up the, uh, the the virus to get ready to go put onto the Packlet ship, Mariner's got, like, uh, like contraband all over the ship that's just like a bunch of weapons like up in the ceiling tile or whatever right exactly uh unfortunately captain freeman gets uh injured and has taken the sick bay uh during the during the fight um so during this whole time we uh they say hey we got this great uh virus we can put into the packlet ship and, and get rid of them uh we need something small that could go over there and deliver the virus to the ship. Uh, and they just all look at Peter and Happer and Peter and Happer's like, I ain't going to do that. I'm going to put my life in, in uh, jeopardy for this stupid mission. He's like, screw you biological life forms. I'm leaving. 
Yep, and just leaves. So, um, so then Rutherford says, "Well, fine, I'll go." And so he he t- goes off, but uh, Shax goes with him, the security officer, and they take the um, shuttlecraft across over to the Packlet ship, and they just plow right into the side of it, and they start uploading the virus. When they find out that Badgie um, is is slowing it down for the self destruction sequence, because uh, he wants to get his revenge on uh, Rutherford for snapping his neck from before. He is so mad and, about uh, that for no reason. Come on, guys. Um, so he's so Badgie's uh, you know is is causing it to slow down, and uh, this is where Shax uh, decides that oh you know I got to save uh, Rutherford so. He, he rips off uh, Rutherford's um, uh, cybernetic implant so uh, Badgie can't uh, mess with him anymore. And, uh, and then he just kicks him onto the, onto the uh, shuttlecraft. shuttlecraft. Pushes the shuttlecraft out the, the hull. And then uh, Badgie completes the upload of the virus and uh, it destroys the Packlet ship, but the... Um, Poor Shax. Is but Shax, dead. Shax is Shax is dead. So it was kind of a shock. They they killed Shax. Like, killed Shax. Uh, so everyone's like super excited. Oh my god, the Stratos has been saved um, by this virus, uh, you know, that had the ship uh, self destruct. But then all of a sudden, three more packlet ships of the same sort come out of warp, and it's, they start. It's the Enterprise. Yeah, they get to grab onto the saucer sections with the grappling arms, and just when everything looks bad, we get uh, the USS Titan shows up with William Riker and uh, Deanna Troy. So we have them coming back. We have uh, Riker and Troy back in action, and a uh, great scene of the um, the Titan just destroying all the. Um, all the uh, packlet uh, ships. Pack ships, yeah, yeah, pretty, pretty cool scene there. So, um, and then we jump after the Titan has saved them. We find out that uh, Riker knows uh, Mariner from uh, some of the past, somehow from the past. So, yeah, and and and, and it's uh, she's like, oh, well, where do you think I got all my contraband from? And so, like, <laughs> and Troy goes, oh, really? Like, oh, we're gonna have to talk about this, aren't we? <laughs> but um, it's like I could totally see Riker being the one, like you know, doing illegal stuff. Oh yeah, totally for sure. And <laughs> Riker could be a little sneaky sometimes. Oh for sure. Um, so at back at Starbase, Ritos is getting repaired. So that's all getting all the ships getting fixed up after being carved up. Rutherford wakes up in sick bay, but he has like his whole head bandaged because he doesn't have a cybernetic implant and he can't remember anything. Doesn't remember Tendi. Doesn't remember anything since what happened with his, uh, his uh, everything that basically that happened with his, um, uh, cybernetics. cybernetic. It's mm-hmm. so weird that like everything is stuck inside of cybernetics and not inside his brain. A little weird. Yeah. A little weird. Not, 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 not weird at all there. Um, so, uh, then we hit that funeral for Shax. So in, uh, Shax is in the old, uh, torpedo tube. And, um, and then they have a talk between, uh, Mariner and, uh, Freeman about her insubordination and everything that happened. And that basically they, they decided we're going to work together, you know, because, um, Freeman has to hold all, you know, has to hold up the rules of Starfleet, but Starfleet keeps on letting things get like slide out of control after they first make contact with people. Yeah. And so you have the Packlet as examples. Like, we thought the Packlets were basically just a bunch of goofballs in space, and here they become like completely out of control. Same thing with the Beta 3 and the, and the Landrew people. So, I mean, it's like you know, second contact and all the further contacts like kind of drops off after their beginning meetings with the people. So, um, and then we have, uh, uh, Mariner and, uh, in the, uh, with, uh, Boimler and Tendi and Rutherford at, in the mess hall. And, and they start talking with, um, uh, Captain Riker and, and Troy. And so, we, we notice that they're all friends, but then we at the very end we find out that Boimler is now a junior grade lieutenant and is aboard the um, USS Titan. So he has been transferred, and we have um, 
we have Mariner just leaving multiple messages, just like, where the hell are you? How could you do this, leaving me here and stuff like that? So pretty angry. Oh, yeah. She's pissed that he, he got the transfer and she did not. Uh-oh. And and then uh, we, last thing we see, we see the, the Bridge of the Titan with uh, uh, Riker coming in saying that he just watched the last of uh, Jonathan Archer's uh, on the Enterprise. So we get that last little bit, uh, like t- maybe a tie-in to uh, at the very, very last episodes of, of, of uh, Star Trek uh, Enterprise. Yeah. And um, and they take off uh, to this planet, but later on we see Peanut Hamper out in space calling for help as she just help kind of... Me. And that's how we leave this, this season. Uh, Dave, thoughts and feelings about this episode and the whole thing the of Lower Decks first season? God, this this show was just like... I, I'm so impressed. I mean, I, I was worried originally that it was going to be like the worst of the three shows being animated and being short you know, make 20 something minute episodes and just being called lower decks, you know, kind of riffing off of that really great TNG episode. And this show has kind of blown me away. Like Mariner was kind of hard to stomach at first, but she toned down more and more, uh, as the series went on. And so she got a lot more, you know, uh, a lot more palatable. Um, and this episode tying in Riker and Troy and, their past and the the, the classic like uh, DS Nine slash movie era uniforms. It was just a great sight to behold. It was a lot of fun. It was awesome seeing the Titan for the first time on screen. And uh, like I said, with the ship stuff, they do not hold back. This the stuff looks great in animation. It, oh God, the ships are, are beautiful. And they even made fun of like, like uh, whenever their Cerritos is getting refit, they're like, "We can upgrade it." It's like, "No, no, no, we don't want it to look like anything like a Sovereign class." And they also yeah, did right. a, they yeah. also did a TOS joke where they said, "Those old scientists." That's what it's TOS yeah. stand like yeah, yeah. those old scientists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, they, it's like <laughs> Spock and McCoy. Uh, yeah, and Scotty. Although yeah, Scotty yeah, should yeah. still be alive, so I'm not sure why they like talked about Scotty. I mean. They should get someone to come in and do a Scotty impression and get Scotty back on the show. So, yeah. I mean, like, just I'm so happy that they brought the pack leads in because I'm like, that that's that's ripe for for comedy. And they didn't really use them for yucks; they used them as a, as an actual threat, which was like kind of great. It's even better yeah, than for, I, even yeah, better yeah. than I thought. But I was like, you know, and I just I loved how I said that like at the first or second episode, you know, it'd be great pack leads, and they did bring in the pack leads. I'm like, oh my gosh, they brought pack leads in. <laughs> <laughs> they brought Packlands in, right? That Absolutely, was, that yeah, was yeah. great. So, I mean, I, I I can't say enough good stuff. And and then and, and the ending is like, so is Boimler off the show? I mean, because Lower Decks is probably going to stay on the Cerritos. I mean, they did the whole intro that's featuring the Cerritos, and the yeah. show is supposed to be. Is the show going to bounce back and forth between the Titan and the Cerritos, or is the show going to focus on the Titan? Like, is it? I I I don't understand. Like, I don't know where the show is going. You know what I mean? And then Rutherford, you know, he's got his whole thing ripped off, his cybernetics, so is he not going to have cybernetics on anymore? Or is that going to get something new grafted on? Or he can't remember what happened, so... Is he going to become more like, um... Um... Arium? Mm-hmm. You know, right, like, exactly. What, like, what... What are we doing? Like, like I, I, the... I mean, it's it's a great ending, but it's at the same time, it's like, what's going to happen? Are, are we losing Boimler? Are we losing, uh, since he's not on the Cerritos anymore? Is the show going to like focus more on the Titan, and we're going to get more Jonathan Frakes? That would be great. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, right, Jonathan right. Frakes has been in like everything. He's been in Deep Space Nine. He's been in Voyager. He's been in Enterprise, Next Gen. I mean, the only thing he hasn't been in is what TOS. <laughs> Well, TOS is because yeah, he wasn't wasn't around for that. So yeah, he, yeah, he's been in everything, right? Yeah, I think he has. I mean, maybe, besides Discovery, maybe he wasn't. I mean, he, maybe he wasn't in Voyager. Marina Sirtis was. I think he though. was. I, th- I think he was in Voyager, but I don't think he wasn't in. He obviously wasn't in Discovery, uh, although he directed some episodes. So. Yeah, okay, so he hasn't been in Discovery in the TOS, but it would I don't know. They could they I wouldn't be surprised if they somehow try to shoehorn him in. Yeah, S- DS nine, he was he was in for like Thomas Riker yeah, and he, he was a he was Thomas Riker in that, yeah. 
And then, uh, yeah, but he's been, he's been in a lot, so yeah. he's cool. very well attached he's, to the franchise. He's like the new like um, Leonard Nimoy, where he just shows up everywhere. You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. Uh, I, I, that's kind of impressive. I'm, I'm I, I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm big props to for him for showing up, but I, I kind of thought he would earlier because they transferred someone else to the Titan a couple episodes ago. So I, I was uh-huh. waiting for them to like have like. A Will Riker cameo of having him yell at the guy and court martial him or something. But how about you? What were your what were your thoughts on the finale? I, honestly, I loved it. Um, I, I I think, that, like you said, the ship to ship action was just phenomenal. Um, it's great to see Riker and Troy, especially on the Titan. Um, we know that they're on the Titan, but obviously we've never seen a series on that. I mean, God damn, why can't we see that series? Um, I love I that. Like... I mean, Jesus. Uh, don't understand why that wasn't ever introduced or thrown out there. Maybe, maybe they don't want to do that anymore, but whatever. But, um, why did, why does Boimler and crew uh, the Titan wear a different uniform? Well, Star Trek, they, no one ever uses. I, I guess it's what they introduced with Discovery, where like people wear different uniforms. I mean, on different ships, on different ships for whatever reason. I mean, in Generations, it was like a giant mistake, and it was a budgetary thing. Mm-hmm. But in Discovery, for whatever reason, they they set up for the older ships have like. The discovered uniforms and the Enterprise, the new ships have like the the multicolored thing, and yeah. and so I guess like I, I I don't know like only certain ships get like the the nicer uniform. I don't know it it, it it's the one thing that bothers me about Discovery and why they're running multiple different uniforms at the same time. I don't know. It's just it seems kind of messy. Like. Most yeah. most militaries like have a uniform and they stick to it, and if it changes, it changes across the board. It's not like you phase right, it in right. slowly. You know, it, it just seems like you kind of just change it. And it's weird right. that Star Trek is introducing this, but I guess it was technically introduced in Generations, but that wasn't that wasn't like on purpose. That was like a lazy budget thing. Discovery's right. doing it on purpose for whatever reason. Yeah, and, so, yeah. and so now it's this animation, so they're also doing it on purpose for whatever reason. So, whatever bad decision happened, it's it's carrying over. So I, I don't know. It's it's not explained. Um, the one thing I I wish there was more yucks with the uh, Packlids. Packlids thing went real fast. Like it was just like they're just like barbarians in space. Um, kind of wish there would be a little more more yucks about the Packlids, but they kind of like went past that. You know, just to just these fierce, you know, barbarians. Yeah, it, you know? it was it was really weird how they didn't play them for yucks at all. Yeah. Um. Uh. I. I mean, the jokes are all there. I loved all, all the humor is great. Um. Really surprised they killed Shax. Uh. Was not. Was not thinking I was going to see that. I mean, I was kind of hoping they were going to do like some kind of gut wrenching like thing in honor of Lower Decks. I mean, it wasn't really gut wrenching that they killed Shax. I mean, I was a little bit sad, but not the same yeah. level of sad as I got in the original Lower Decks episode back in TNG. So, I mean, they, they were kind of pulling at the heartstrings a little bit, but it, it wasn't a, a big a thing as it was. But what it does have in common is that it was both uh, it was a Bajoran both times. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Star yeah. Trek's racist against Bajorans. <laughs> Bajorans, right? Exactly. Um, I, I don't know. I just the callbacks are all great. I, I mean, going back to Landrew was just so silly, you know, and it was great at the same time. Um, the exocomp, such a weird thing to throw in there, and that this exocomp is totally like sentient and talking to them and stuff like that. That's funny as well. Um, and then it just bugs out, doesn't want to help them. Peace out, dudes. Yeah. So, I mean, there's nothing I dislike about Lower Decks. In fact, Lower Decks is probably one of the sharpest uh, series I've seen in in Star Trek in in a long time. I mean, I mean, I think I might want to watch Lower Decks over Enterprise. Like, if you said, like, would you rather watch Enterprise or Lower Decks? 
I might want to watch Lower Decks. I, I mean, I, it depends what season the Vinter Fry is. I mean, season four is some really good stuff. Season four it. is really good. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree on, on that one. Um, I might pass over some uh, some Voyager episodes. Um, hell, I might pass over Lower Decks for some TOS, which I love TOS. So um, there's some good stuff there, you know. Lower Decks has surprised me. The last three episodes, I, I, every time one came out, I'm like, this is my favorite episode. I was like, no, this is my favorite episode. So, this is, so the last three episodes came out strong, super strong. And I think the last three are probably my favorite of the series. Yeah. They were, they were really well done. So, I mean, major, major props to them. And, and because they're only loosely inter, uh, interconnected, Mm-hmm. They do have a lot more rewatchability than Picard does, or yeah, um, right. Because you, you don't feel like you got to watch the whole thing. Yeah, I mean, like, there's you can't really watch. Like, the only episode of Discovery you can watch and it has nothing to do with anything is the Harry Mudd episode, because which is a fantastic it, episode. Because because it doesn't connect to anything really at all, other than the tangential right. Klingon war thing, which Discovery didn't really hit on hard enough anyway. But right. um. Yeah, it, 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 that's the only standalone episode in in either season of Discovery, really. And then um, Picard's also just a giant serialized slow mess. They, there's no episodes that stand out where you'd want to watch them on their own. But these last couple episodes of Lower Decks, I'll probably watch again pretty yeah. pretty soon. No. Good stuff. Um, I am excited to see where they take this. I don't know if there's. I know that they they have been greenlit for another season, but obviously, we don't know like when this would even come out. So I imagine it'd be well over a year before we'd see another um, Lower Decks series yeah, or could, season. Yeah, it could be. I mean, but like like I said earlier, I don't. Know, how is it going to work? Are we going to be on the Cerritos? Are we going to be just on the Titan? Are we going to split time between They'll the probably two? Probably bounce back and forth, and I bet you Boiler will come back at some point. You yeah, know? Um, it, it's it's so funny. Too. It's when we had Guy on for the second episode, he was thinking um, that uh, Mariner would be the one who gets who gets uh, transferred out, and it looks like uh, it was Boiler. Right. Exactly. Yeah, I don't know. It's, I, I just think it's everything they've done has been fantastic. I've enjoyed it. There's nothing I do not like. And um, I just love the jokes. I love God, man. There's just so many great stuff that they're throwing in there. Oh, they finally made some sex jokes this episode. Where whenever like Ransom was in there with the uh, Mariner and the Captain, he's yeah, like, "I'm yeah. not hard, but I could be if I wanted to be. If you wanted me, if you wanted me, it was, like, it was pretty good. I was like, <laughs> there's been sex jokes peppered yeah. through the whole thing. Obviously. Yeah, but, but that one was like one of the most like blatant ones in front of women. It was just like, <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I just can't think of anything. I I don't think there's anything that they they they've done that I don't want to see, and I or anything that they opportunities that they missed. Um, I love the crew. I, I like everything. Sometimes I think Captain Freeman's a little bit too too weak of a captain, but it's still like he kind of makes in with the jokes for everything. You know, yeah. the, the 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 upper staff. You know, Ransom's an idiot. You know, Freeman seems like a bit of an idiot. Not idiot idiots, but they're just a little bit, like, detached from reality kind of thing. I mean, the so, the bridge crew, I mean, I'm going to miss Shax because he was my favorite person on the bridge crew. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I wonder who's going to take over his part. I wonder if uh, Mariner's going to take his part, uh, place. No, I don't know. I mean, like, it would make sense because they were, t- I mean, the captain was, Freeman was talking to her about um, being, like, a good, a good right arm. So maybe yeah. maybe she will be security officer. I mean, who who knows what they're going right. to do going forward with uh with lower decks. I mean, as far as for missed opportunities, I still wish they would have like given us more Orion lore because the only lore we got was in the second to last episode where it's like it's been five years where some Orions haven't been pirates. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, that's the only Orion lore we got. Except right, other, exactly. except for them that they don't have dogs and like that's not all that interesting, but the fact that a couple of them stopped pirating five years ago that's interesting. Yeah, exactly. They're still right, mostly right. pirates, but some of them have are, are wanting to change. So, It'd be interesting to see like a, a book or a comic that takes place uh, like uh, Orion's 
like uh, double crossing Fringies and going back and forth that kind of like those two races. Oh yeah. That'd, be, know? that'd be fascinating, especially for this era. Cause I mean like uh, Fringies, you could argue are some of the most overused uh, aliens in Star Trek. Uh, Borg, sure. Borg are up there. Klingons are up there. Uh, Cardassians are up there. But uh, Orions are criminally underused. Uh, and oh, so much so. And, uh, and Dorians, even Dorians have more screen time than Orions. And, and Dorians are still criminally underused. Same thing with Tellarites and stuff like that. So, I mean, yep. like, there's so many great aliens in Star Trek. And, and I was just really hoping for more Orion info with Tindy on there. And she never really got, like, a a big episode focusing on her where everyone else kind of did <clears throat> and and did you notice that um they had the uh, original animated series pictures of of kirk and i think it was spock uh when they're talking about landrew they yeah. had pictures of them yeah so they had the actual cool. so again we have made the animated series canon once more and um Oh, what was I thinking? Um, oh, that because you were talking about the Orions, there's a lot of Orion action in the uh, the animated series. There was a couple, uh, a couple things. Yeah, yeah, way more than we'd ever got in the original series. Yeah, they actually show uh, so, uh, a uh, Orion ship in the uh, right. Orion ships. Orions uh, and the Orions don't look green in it. They're like brown or something like that. Because I don't the remember guy was why. colorblind. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's where the Klingons um, and dribbles are pink. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. So, um, great stuff. Um, uh, like I said, we don't know when we're going to get another the next season, but obviously next week we jump in uh, into the deep end with uh, Discovery Season 3. Yeah. I, I Back into that. Yeah, I wonder how long before Michael gets back to Discovery. Because, I mean, the previews seem like she's like away from them and like it's a big thing for them to get back together. So I'm wondering if I that's bet it a... happens in an episode or two. Yeah, yeah. I, I bet it won't take too long. I, I um, mean, I mean uh, for the show to work, I mean, I would I would guess it had to happen in the first episode. But it, I, I wouldn't be surprised, especially with how, how badly Picard was paced, if they don't get her back to the ship till episode two or three. Because yeah. I mean, remember in Picard, they didn't even get the space till after episode three. Yeah, right, right. So who, who knows Uh-oh. what they're gonna do? I don't know, but um... that would be interesting. I mean, we're we've got ten great weeks of Star Trek behind us, and hopefully, we've got ten good weeks ahead of us. I, I think it could be really good. Um, the 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 good thing about right now is that. We are going to be so far in the future um, that, like, anything could happen. Yeah, and I mean, that's fine, but I mean, like, uh, the the problem has always been the storytelling with the live-action shows. I mean, canon's an issue, but I mean, like, I mean, you can put canon aside if the story is, like, really good, and the story hasn't been good enough to kind of forgive the canon problems. You know what I mean? So, yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, like, when the story's weak and you're breaking canon, it's like, come on, guys. But, but yeah, I mean, they're outside of the constraints of canon now. So, I mean, that does offer a lot of freedom. But it just depends on how the story's written. So, hopefully, hopefully it'll be good. I mean, it, the special effects look slick. I mean, all the trailers have looked pretty slick. I'm interested to see if we get to hear, hear a Morn talk. Since we did see a Morn in the original mm-hmm. preview, so mm-hmm. um, and Cardassian, I, I, I'm, it'll it'd be really cool seeing some of these, uh, you know, next gen DS9 races show up with Discovery crew. I wonder if they even know about them, you know? No, I'm yeah. It it looks um, it, you know, it looks really good, and like I think I I don't know if I said it when we started recording or before we started recording, but it looks like Michael Burham is going to be finally made captain. Yeah. So, although um, I think, I think in the screenshots, some people have seen Saru's badge and it does have four pens on it. So maybe he'll step down. Or, oh, really? Or maybe he'll actually die. Since they, <laughs> I mean, cause I mean, they, they had the whole thing like last season where he's like, I'm going to die, Michael. And he doesn't die. And I was like, Oh my God. You just like wasted 30 minutes of really bad melodrama. Oh, I know. Where we I knew know. he wasn't going to die, 
And then yeah, I, yeah. I, it's just like, I mean, like, it would have been ballsy if they would have killed him. I mean, that would have yeah. been... They would have made it, the melodrama worth it if you really went away, but it just feels like a waste of time that he's alive. I'm like, hmm. yeah, right, right, right. Um, yeah, so um, exciting that we can jump back into Star Trek and still do it. I, I'm going to reserve my judgment. I'm going to watch without prejudice. And season three is and, when Star Trek usually gets better. So, I mean, fingers and eyes and toes crossed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, so I'm 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 excited. I'm not maybe super I don't know what the word to put, but I, I don't know if I'm I, I think that it's totally going to be uh amazing, but um I'm I'm like I said, I'm going to just try to watch it. optimistic since yeah, since uh, guess lower since lower decks has been so fantastic. Yeah, yeah. So hopefully they uh, they've been focusing on Picard, and they kind of took their eyes off of Discovery, and they're going to let Discovery breathe and become its own thing. Like you said before, we haven't seen any shakeups in the writer room, so that's a huge thing. As, I, as I far think, as I've seen, I don't, I don't, I can't remember any shakeups this season. So hopefully, I don't remember either. And and the thing is, Dave, I think that's one of our biggest gripes is that every both seasons. Of of discovery has had huge shakeups in the writers' rooms, and the same thing happened in in Picard as well. Mm-hmm. So um, it it definitely affects the 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 season. You know, it's like you have like some story that's plotted out, and then you feel like uh, the new writers are put in, and they grafted on a bunch of stuff that doesn't totally work. You know, it doesn't feel organic. It feels kind of like you know thrown together. Like and and duct tape this part of the story on. It was like, why do we need that? Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah. so so hopefully it'll be the strongest without uh, the shakeup. And I, I yeah. don't re- recall ever seeing a, a, an article about a shakeup this time. So fingers crossed. Yeah. yeah. Um. Anything else, Dave? No, I'm good. Next week on to Discovery season three. I know. I can't believe we're finally here. So, uh, guys, if there's something else you want to talk about Lower Decks or about uh, Star Trek Prodigy with Kate Mulgrew or uh, with Discovery coming up, um, please uh, contact us. You can email us at Synthaholic uh, at yahoo.com. You can hit us up on our Facebook group, Facebook forward slash groups forward slash Synthaholics. And you can also uh, tweet at us at our Twitter handle, Synthaholic Duo. And if the show is something you want to support, please go to our Patreon, Patreon forward slash Synthaholics. We greatly appreciate any support you can give us there. Well, Dave, we have to say goodbye to Lower Decks and their crew. I, I, I'm really sad. It's It's been such a good ride. It's, it's it just, has been it's, a joy. It's just gotten better and better as the series went on. I, I loved every minute of it, and I think this is one of the more fantastic things that Star Trek uh, CBS All Access has done. And uh, if they could do more of this... It doesn't have to be silly, silly uh, comedy, but if they could do more of that in that vein, I think, I think I would be very happy. Oh yeah, me too for sure. I mean, this has been the best Star Trek show CBS All Access has produced, so more in this vein would be very, very good. Absolutely. All right, guys. Well, next week it's Star Trek Discovery three, so um, get ready. We're going what? 400 years? 900 years in the future? 900 years into the future. (laughs) And the year 3000. (laughs) I don't even remember what year they're supposed to be in. But anyways, until then, guys, live long and prosper, one and all. Shit our pants You're the best drinking friend I ever had They're going to the year 2020 That's why it's so desolate In the oh, trailers fuck. We, went, we went the wrong year <laughs> yeah, they Go went back, back, go back They went back in time instead of to the future The bell rides <laughs> oh, Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Always could use some more bell riots Oh my god! Yeah, I, I, God, it's, it's like, the show's just gotten better and better and better as each episode. Like, so cool. Yeah, I, I, I it's, it's like I'm this very... is what this is what we wanted back when we heard Star Trek was coming back. 
Right. You know? And it's like, they didn't have to do comedy, you know? Yeah. They could have just done, like, you know, stuff that kind of felt Star Trek-ish. Yeah. So. I mean, like, I mean, the feel is, like, is, is, is such a big thing in, in mm-hmm, Star Trek, mm-hmm. you know? And and Picard didn't didn't feel like it. And, you know, you can experiment and, and do things that feel different, but you got to do it in the right context. And, and they haven't nailed that yet. Yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, there's, there's ways to do it. I mean, like, even even with Star Wars, you should make the the the, the numbered movies like the what you you expect to, and you do the spinoffs as like a comedy or a romantic comedy, or a, you know you could, you could, you know work within the confines of the universe and set up some different situations. Like Star Trek's a huge right. universe. If you're gonna do a show about a Starfleet ship and Starfleet characters, it should feel a certain way. And then if you're doing a show about like you know you know smugglers and stuff in Star Trek, you can make the show feel really different. Yeah. It's in the world, but I mean, you're not you're not following Starfleet. You can make it feel different. And I guess I know Rios isn't Starfleet, but Rios is ex Starfleet, and so is Raffi, and so is Picard. I mean, almost everyone on the crew was like ex Starfleet, <laughs> you know. So I mean, it's, right, right, right. That a scientist. So I mean, like, you're not really that far away from Starfleet and, and Picard. So uh, I know it's, it's just, um, it was just it was different for the sake of being different and. And uh, if they were doing a show about the Ryan Syndicate, it could be dark and scary and all this other stuff. I mean, that's fine. That that, that would makes perfect sense for Star Trek to be dark and gritty if they did that. I don't know. And like, I, I'm just and the swearing in the cartoon yeah. like hasn't bothered me really either because it's just like it's funny because the show. The the show sw- you show, saying the swearing of the cartoon? Yeah, the swearing in the cartoon. It's also bleeped, oh. but still, like it's it's a lot, it's like it's done in a funnier context. Yeah, that doesn't bother me at all. Yeah, I, I don't know why that would. I mean, honestly, it's, it's cause, I don't know. I think they've done everything so perfectly. I mean, we made a big deal out of it in Picard when the admiral's like sheer fucking hubris, because it was such a weird thing and it just didn't feel right. But like, I didn't think that, that didn't bother me that she swore. She just like she just like it was like, what, why are you swearing at him? Like, what's the point of it? I, I don't know. It's just like. Yeah. I don't know. It was a weird. That was a weird scene too. Yeah, I don't know. There's a lot of stuff I didn't. That was very strange about. Like it felt wrong, but when they're in lower decks when they're swearing, it's just kind of funny because like Mariner doesn't follow the rules anyway, so her swearing is like right in line with her character, and also she's just yeah, like she, she's so irreverent. Yeah. So I mean, that, yeah, exactly. that's what. But she's but in Picard, she was like this admiral, this snooty admiral, and she just starts like swearing at Picard for like, no reason. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I don't know. It, yeah, it's good stuff. It's it's just so weird how like the swearing didn't even like phase me in in um in lower decks, but it bothered the hell mm-hmm. out of me in Picard. Context, man. Yeah. Context. Yeah, it is it is a bit of context, that's for sure, so